All right, let's talk about muscle for a second. So a uh, pretty big influencer online, Dr. Lane Norton, put up this one study. It's interesting, Lane does some good stuff and sometimes I disagree so much with him. And it's okay, we all disagree with each other from time to time. But one of the things he hates is when people talk about mechanistic studies. Mechanistic studies are like, we find one little biological process and then we then take that one biological process and we extrapolate that to a whole physiologic system. So for instance, let's take this idea of lectins. Uh, people out there saw a study that said that lectins bind nutrients and so they therefore conclude that if you eat beans, you are not gonna get enough nutrients. Now, that's ridiculous, right? There are thousands of studies that show that bean eaters are healthier. Uh, when you look at blue zone populations, there's a huge consumption of legumes. Legumes are actually one of the foods most associated with longevity. So obviously looking at that one little process can't be right. There's gotta be something more to it. And of course, there's many different lectins. Some lectins may do this, other lectins don't. Lectins get cooked out when you're, when you're uh, preparing them. Uh, some lectins are actually really good for you. You would wish that they weren't be, uh, they wouldn't be cooked out. And so looking at one little mechanistic study is erroneous. I saw a uh, a person online today that she was referring to this uh, Chicago study where they found that one specific fatty acid in meat is good for treating cancer. And so she therefore said, we need to be eating meat. And that's ridiculous. That was one little fatty acid. There's multiple other things like, um, uh, advanced glycolated end products, um, you've got uh, heterocyclic amines, you've got N-nitrosamines, things like this that actually cause cancer. And there's been some studies that saying people that eat more meat have more cancer, whether you're looking at the EPIC data study or other da data sets. So looking at mechanistic studies is not a good idea. Now, we go back to Lane. Uh, Lane typically hates those kind of things. And yet yesterday he talked about a study where they showed that elderly people that ate a meat-based meal, this was one meal, this was a study on one meal. Uh, if they ate a meat-based meal, they got more amino acids in their system and more muscle protein synthesis only over the first six hours than if they ate a plant-based meal. All right, so what's the relevance of that? The implication is, and the study was funded by Beef Checkoff. If you don't know what Beef Checkoff is, it's the marketing brand of beef. And it's not that when funded studies are not necessarily bad, but the problem I have with funded studies is they'll fund a study where they know they're gonna get a positive result. Obviously, there are certain amino acids that are higher in an animal-based meal than there are in a plant-based meal, but is that good? So there's more leucine, for instance, in an animal-based meal. And we know that leucine stimulates muscle protein synthesis, and that's what they were looking at, muscle protein synthesis. So more muscle protein synthesis with an animal-based meal. The implication then is that, well, we should tell elderly people to eat more animal-based than plant-based because they're going to get muscle protein synthesis. But do they? Does that mean that they get more muscle? Does that mean that they get more grip strength? The answer is no. There have been many, many studies on this where you increase protein in elderly patients. Do they have more lean mass? And it's hard to measure lean mass. A lot of people use all kinds of different things to measure lean mass. When we say lean mass, we want to know muscle mass, right? But when you're measuring lean mass with things like uh, bioimpedance, uh, other things go into the lean mass. So if someone has uh, growth in their organs, if they've got excess water, that goes down as lean body mass, bone, things like that. And so, an increase in lean mass may not mean an increase in muscle mass. We don't care about an increase in lean mass if it doesn't mean that you're stronger and more resilient and less frail. Uh, and so when you look at studies that are looking more specifically at MRI, uh, that are looking at grip strength, that are looking at uh, ability to do things like sitting to standing, there are multiple studies saying increasing protein does not increase strength and actual muscle mass. The only times it's been shown to help has been when you combine protein with resistance training, but even then that was a very small advantage over a resistance training at a 0.8 grams per kilogram, the RDA uh, for protein. Um, and in other studies that 
the protein and protein supplements didn't make a difference over just plain resistance training. And in fact, if you look at the study that Lane's talking about, you would assume then that people that ate more animal protein would be less frail as they age. But a Chinese longitudinal study and a European longitudinal study looked at people and followed them for a few years. And they looked at those that ate a more plant-based diet and those that ate a more animal-based diet and those that ate a more plant-based diet had less sarcopenia. And then in America, in the Harvard Nurses and Health Profession study, um, when they looked at people that ate more plant-based, there was less frailty, less frailty. All right, so you can't take one mechanistic study and have it give you any idea because what that's, li we're looking only at muscle protein synthesis in um, the study that Lane's talking about. But what we really wanna know is a balance between muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown. Now what causes muscle protein breakdown? It's a lot harder to measure, but we could make a lot of theories. I mean, a, a lot of this is, is still being figured out. There's something called carbamylation, where breakdown products of protein may interfere with the actual structure of muscle um, inflammation. Now, if you're going on a meat-based diet, if you look at the dietary inflammatory index and you eat a more meat-based diet because you want to get more protein synthesis, you may be creating more inflammation and that may be breaking down more muscle. But regardless, the bottom line is eating a more meat-based diet does not equate to having more muscle.